Hello, hello. And today we're looking at Ancient at Legend 5 replay analysis. As always, this one is unscripted, going live, so expect a lot of rambling and nonsense. But hopefully I'll get better at this. Anyway, while nothing is happening, let's see about the picks. Storm is pitted, pitted against Kanka, which is a kind of a tough matchup since Actually, not 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 such a tough matchup anymore since Kankas has been nerfed at 721C. The cleave only works, only gives extra damage when it's off cooldown. This means previously Kankas used to just deny everything while keeping it on off cooldown, but this time they have to use it offensively, otherwise it's wasted. So Storm should have no problems just securing glass hits with uh, remnants. Although this could very well be Monkey King mid as well, which is at this point kind of harder now. And also Storm could should could receive ganks from Spirit Breaker. But as always, if Storm receives ganks, this means other lanes should be, be doing better. So shouldn't be too, too stressed about that part. Otherwise, Phoenix and Dazzle, they are they are never a problem for Storm, he can just flat out ignore them during the late game. And BKB counters all of them. Alright, so it's Kanka. Well, first thing should, uh, a Storm player should do versus someone who is melee is just pull the creeps back. That way the melee opponent will have to either ignore some of the creeps or walk, walk into good position for harassment or still miss some creeps because he's far away from both parties, both enemy and friendly creeps. Always aim to make as much as much distance as possible, just like this. In this little portion here, Stor uh, Kanga had to choose between denying, I think, no, I think that was just, he had to choose between less hitting creep near him or creep near next to Storm, and because he created distance, Kanga could only get one of those without using cleave. So that's good. In this part right here, when you know Kanka is going to walk to you, you can always prepare a remnant. So if he hits last hit, he will still suffer massive damage. That's that's good, that's distance. That's that's the correct way to play against Kanka. And this this time Storm secured the range hit with the remnant, which in this case was kind of unnecessary since Kanga was kind of far away. If if you have like steady three creeps hitting a range creep, that's that's usually enough to to use the right click. Although now with the reduced remnant cost, it's it's easier for Storm to survive in the lane while using remnants. But other otherwise, try to conserve it because having mana is always good to like prevent ganks or turn turn them around. Which is exactly what's happening. And because Storm has Null and Mantle, this means he had less gold to work with, and he still doesn't have Battle while he, battle while he's taking the rune, that, that's, that's bad. With the starting items like uh, just two branches and two Mantles of Intelligence, Storm would, at, at most times, would have enough money and would have a battle before the rune spawns. Which means you can go to the rune, regen, and refill it immediately. Which is the best case scenario. Especially versus Kanka. Kanka isn't doing a really good job zoning Storm at, at levels like 1 to 3. So that's always really easy for Storm to last hit with remnants, at least, if not manually, and have a bottle before the rune spawns. Push out and take the rune. So this is something to consider at all times. Again, manual hits, that's good, because Kanka is far away. And this this little, little part here is really good. As long as Kanka uses cleave, he will... At some point, he will start uh, leaving range creep at like really low with one or two denies. And you sh Storm should always attempt to do that, like in before and like now. Also, also, uh, as a Storm player, one should never forget to 
not only maintain an eye on the denies button last hits as well. In, in this case, 10 seconds ago, Storm forgot to check the status of his range creep, which could have been easily denied, but Kanka also forgot. So always, if you're aimed for denying, just walk towards your own melee creep, uh, range creep and walk, walk towards enemies range creep and secure it with a remnant at least. This way you can get both the last hit and the deny. So far the lane is pretty passive, it's going good. Storm is actually way ahead on networks from Kanka. That's gonna create an, an easy mid game. This is this is really good as, 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 as so far. Although one one thing Storm isn't doing is not it's, he's not pushing out and going to refill the battle, which kind of makes it easy for Kanka to go deny the rune at least, or secure some last hits in the, in the meanwhile. As a Storm, as soon as you see the timer approaching, like rune timer, and the enemy mid is capable of trading hits with you, always push out. This way, when you return, the cruise will be back, and you can secure both rune and the farm. But this Kanga is pretty passive, so Storm has no, like, no penalty taking the runes, so that's good. As far as vision goes, it's it's a good ward. Storm can see both high ground and the rune, can easily pull. So vision, vision, vision is really good. Although right now I would buy another observers, since you can't afford a, a, a downtime. Okay, Kanka isn't in the lane, Storm just pushes out, which is good, he can go in the jungle now. Although this is minute 5, which has catapult, so I would say the best the best play in this one, just push out and hit the tower. Aim, aim to keep the catapult al as li alive as much as possible, so it can do some serious tower damage. But the Kunko is back, so that no longer matters. Well, so far, looks like enemy is at 9 kills. And their Monkey King is, is leading the game. But since... Since Monkey wasn't in the middle, Storm sh really wouldn't have any problems playing against Monkey in the mid-game. Monkey itself is only dangerous if he's against Storm, and he's a good Monkey if he, if, if he can deny Storm's farm in the middle. If he's a carry, it's, it's mostly free kill until minute 20, until BKB or something, and in the late game still it does nothing to storm. Alright, so we're pushing out and going jungle. That's that's the correct play here. And yeah, it's minute 6 and storm still doesn't have a ward, although I, I can see a tiny speck on the bottom right rune. But myself, I would always make sure to keep the wards refreshed so you can still see the high ground and the rune. And pretty often if you place it on the enemy side of the high ground, you can catch enemy going to the jungle and, 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 and back. And oftentimes just secure his own uh, gang, the enemy in his own jungle. A lot of like Shadow, shadow, fiend, shadow Friends would often push the lane and go jungle, and that's where you can... As a Storm, if you have vision, if you know he's going to jungle, you can often just go for the kill, very easily. Which isn't applicable, applica applicable in this game. Well, so far, if you're counting mistakes, the only thing I can say is uh, the battle was a bit, little bit too late, and Storm isn't, still isn't keeping the vision up. Otherwise, it's a it's a good start. It's a really good start. Storm is storm is second net, net worth above the carry. That's that's really good. Don't risk it. No, that that's usually not worth it. You're 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 trying to kill a low level enemy position four, which definitely doesn't set him back because he's broke. But if you die, it sets you back a lot. So. In these cases, unless you can secure the kill and still have like mana left to farm, then try to go for it. But in this case, this was really risky. Storm is wasting a lot of time for a under-level position 4 player. That's, re that's really not worth it. 
Just if 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 you avoided the gang, just go to the tower. Just just go farm. Forget about it. Another thing Storm can do easily in this game is just go top, kill some monkeys. Storm isn't isn't behind at any means. He he's going to have boots now, and monkey is kind of an easy kill in the early games, especially if if you can get axe to taunt along. So as a storm, should always look at all the lanes and decide if you have kill potential anywhere, which in this case would easily be top dazzle. Since, like, I can see Rubik is top alone, their support, Dazzle, shouldn't really be in the lane a lot. He will, like, go stack, go gank. And, and that's where Storm can just sneakily teleport or just walk with a good rune and, and kill Monkey real fast. And still, we have no vision on the middle. I stressed this the last time I reboot someone. You always have to have vision on the middle and the runes. Especially while the tower stands. As long as Storm is farming, this is fine, but as uh, like I said before, you should always uh, decide if you can do more than just farming. Like, if you just rotate lane and jungle, but you're missing your kill potential, you're not, you're not utilizing uh, team's power spikes. You should only farm if you have nothing to contribute, or you are too weak to help secure other lanes. Like, as an, as an, an alternative, to pushing out, pushing out middle and going to the jungle, why Storm could really go top, like scare Monkey away, kill maybe Monkey, and then go farm that side of the jungle. This way you, you, you accomplish three things. You still push out the lane, you still farm, but you also prevent enemy from farming just by being there. Again, this is level 5. Uh, Position level 5 support player it, with Storm can kill, but it's not worth it. If he could kill Kanka, then it would be worth it, but at this point, it's not worth it. Although, we should always, if, if the enemies are there, we should always try to fight if, if it's possible. Like in this case, if Storm was alone, just walk, walk out and, and, and they just wasted time. But right now, the allies are trying to fight, and in this case, Storm should help. Now, that's a really good thing that Storm did not switch targets to Spirit Breaker, since, again, it's a Spirit Breaker, he's under farm, he does nothing. It's really good, really good play that Storm kept kept uh, Kanka occupied, which eventually led to his teammates disposing of Spirit Breaker and leading to the kill. That's, that's a really good play, kudos. As a Storm, you should always, always uh, wait where you would do the most good, and in that case, that was exactly keeping Kanka occupied and not chasing low-level kills. One, one mistake I'm noticing here again is uh, the Storm player doesn't have clarities and or teleport. You should always have at least two, so if you teleport to a tower, you can always have one left and not, not no need to hunt in the side shop, and clarities should be running at all times, like right now, Storm uh, did a gank, to, took the rune and that brought him up to 50%, but with a clarity he should have like 80 or 90 percent now. So yeah, always have clarities and here we go. He just got some clarities. He heard me. Good. That's a huge ass stack. Let's see if he can stack it one more. I don't think that's possible. I couldn't achieve it myself. But hey, let's see if it works. Okay, that's good. Before before going to clear the baby should always uh, clean up uh, 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 under the tower and then go clear the jungle stack. So that that is good priorities. Still no ward though. That this kind of pisses me off. Like it's been six minutes and there is still no minute, no no middle ward. Okay. 
that's beautiful. Right now, Conker said in the best case scenario is to just continue pressuring the tower, which is what the player is doing, so that's that's really good. As soon as Storm hits level 12, that's another power spike, he can use his ultimate to increase speed and damage, and that's where he should really be looking to start uh, doing pickoffs around the map. This jump was a little bit too mana need like mana consuming. If you're jumping away from danger, do the smaller jumps. Most enemies will just turn around if they see Storm doing his animation without checking to see how far he jumps. So you can just you can just jump like minimal distance and this this would still turn enemies away. So try to conserve your mana when jumping. Oh, that's kind of unfortunate. I believe it wasn't avoidable unless he had vision. Also far, the game is for Storm is doing really, uh, going really good. There were many more right plays than mistakes. So from now, it's, it's looking really good for the Radiant team, even though they're behind a lot. But Storm does more than Kunk in the late game. Unless the team is horribly equipped to deal with Kanka. And by now, Monkey's joining the fights, something which we haven't seen before. Wraith under... King missed the kill somehow. That sucked. Oh, yeah, the, the offlane tower went away, so Monkey's looking to capitalize on his early game like networks, which is, which is what I've been telling Storm should be doing. Going here, teleporting here and, and, and farming exactly this lane is, is a really good choice. Since it seems to be empty because the tower is down, so Storm can just de-push and farm the enemy jungle in, in the meanwhile. That's a good choice. Storm is also halfway to, or through Orchid and can easily pick off uh, Dazzles and uh, Phoenixes. But I would say in this game particularly only Dazzle is a, is a viable target because otherwise Kanka and, and, and uh, Spirit Breaker Kanka and Spirit Breaker would take a while to be put down and that gives enough time for Dazzle to grave them. I myself would just power the Rush Bloodstone in this fight just for the reason that uh, they have a lot of like sus sustain and uh, kill and save potential. Like I said, only Dazzle is a viable Orchid target. And with Bloodstone you can survive Kunkus, uh, Kunkus combo, ba uh, Spirit Breaker's combo as well. That's a nice catch. But with Orchid you're your only choice is to kill Dazzle and then just run because you're out of mana and, and you can't kill the other tanky heroes. I would say going Yule's Bloodstone or Bloodstone Yule's would be the, be the better choice here. So far, the enemy is well, well equipped for offensive actions with a uh, Kankas, Kankas kit, bar, uh, Spirit Breaker's kit, and Monkey's joining fights now. And this brings me to another topic on Orchid. Uh, if the team is going to play from behind, Orchid is really not a solid choice. And in this case, that's, that's exactly what's happening. Storm has a good timing on Orchid, but unfortunately, the entire team is losing space. And Storm will be not be able to get a good pickoffs because the enemy team, like I said, is really tanky, really elusive, and is going to lead the fights, which means they're not going to walk one by one, pushing out waves, because they're grouping up and taking fights. I would even wager that the choice of Orchid from my point of view, could be game losing here. 
Then again, sometimes it's hard to spot how the game is going to play out, so I'm, I'm not judging. Right now, Storm should be actively pushing out, because the enemies are like really active around the map. So Storm should just push out and then just join the fights to toward Yanks, exactly what's going on now, that's good. And always focus Dazzle as a Storm, since in this game especially it's, it's an easy kill. And most securable kill. This was a necessary jump. But it was to the base, so no, no hard losses. Orchid timing is really good, but, but like I said, I have my doubts the Storm will be able to utilize it often. If Monkey or Dazzle or anyone is solo pushing, then the Orchid is a good choice, yeah. What, what was that? Never waste a silence if you're not going to follow up. Because Orchid does cast some mana and this was, and this was just a mistake. I only use Orchid if you're certain you're gonna jump the person and kill him. Or, or like if the team is waiting for you to silence, but in, in that case Storm was flying, there was no, no one around to follow up. So that was kind of a waste. And looking at the net worth, the, yeah, the entire Radiant team is kind of behind. Current goals for Storm and, and the team would be exactly that, just push out, split push and, and, and join the fights whenever enemy enemies are trying to go deeper, pick off or take the towers. Also one more thing, uh, as a Storm you should never buy Tome of Knowledge since you usually have the freedom to push out wave solo or jungle and, and that's how you get experience and those supports, especially from behind, they really need experience because they, they have no other means to, to gain it. And if, you, if you're if you buying Tome of Knowledge, you're just further crippling your team's ability to fight back. You have the means to get experience, your supports don't. Always leave the tone for the supports. This is the first time I'm seeing Storm actually hover the camera to check on someone's like status items. Storm player should do this definitely much more often. You should be checking lanes, having guys on the minimap, checking lanes physically at all times and looking for those sweet sweet pickoffs, especially with Orchid. Like if if he saw a dazzle there, that there's a good chance that Storm can just like zip in, kill and, and teleport out. But in this case if the Teleport was on cooldown, so it might not be an ideal choice then, but might be an, an ideal choice next time. Also, as a storm, you got you, you you gotta know your limits. You gotta know what heroes you can take and what heroes you cannot. Like in this case, the if storm jumped from much further position, he could have killed Monkey King, but in this case, the jump was too small, which led to an unresolved orchid and, and eventually kill. Like if you're going to jump an enemy which is close to its own towers, uh, close enough for the team to get to you, like in this case uh, Spirit Breaker could or Dazzle did, make sure you either jump from far enough so you can get a clean fast kill or make sure the enemy is far enough himself so you can finish him off before enemies join, others join. So this was another mistake. Although I don't really have any, any advice how to correct these mistakes besides just playing more Storm and having a feeling on what you can kill and what you can't kill. It all, come, it all comes with experience. And if Storm was alive, this, there's a good chance he could have turned this fight around. So that's a really, good, a really good dive to counter kill for Radiant side. That, that was good, that was a good pick off. Although I wouldn't have used Orchid in this case, uh, Spirit Breaker was pretty low and just one Vortex would have prevented, prevented him from jumping up, jumping away. And if you could have saved Vortex, uh, no, no, you could have saved Orchid for more crucial targets like Dazzle, maybe Phoenix. So 
So yeah, so far the biggest mistake is going Orchid without proper pickoff targets, which cripples Storm's team fight ability and survivability. While the enemies are using their power spikes correctly and just walking as 5, 4 and, and doing pickoffs. So far nothing is happening, I'm gonna skip forward a bit. Well, that, that was a good choice, there's no need to join the fight if, if the enemy is already outnumbered since you, you, you don't really contribute anything unless you just want those bloodstone charges then it's okay. Otherwise in this case, yeah, just go, just go wherever the free, wherever the free space is and make use of it. The lack of vision is pretty alarming here, like if Storm, if Storm would be jumped by Spirit Breaker, he would have no ways of seeing it. There's very little, very little vision around the river area, which is crucial when you're playing against the Spirit Breaker, since you can, all, you can mostly, most of the time spot him going through the river. Like this is clean dazzle kill, go for it. That was really good. As soon as you kill someone near the tower, like just teleport away, since most of the times it will it will refresh your teleport cooldown, so you can have it by the next 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 fight, and it will definitely turn some enemies away. In this case, I I wouldn't really fight since there's a high chance there could be monk in the trees. And Storm is just wasting his own old, old, old mana. And even, even if you kill Spirit Breaker again, he's really like. He's not a good target to kill. So do not waste your resources on dangerous areas like that. that that's, that's kind of another mistake. So far, many deaths are from the fact that Storm is chasing kills that are either impossible or not just not worth it. From the enemy perspective, I'm not sure why they are not going as 5 and pushing out. They, they have the advantage now. Maybe because the Spirit Breaker is offline, probably. Again, as soon as you respawn, choose a lane which has the least amount of friendly heroes. So you can use the space for yourself and and save the space for the enemy for the friendly team to farm elsewhere on the map. So that that's good so far. And yeah, don't get too close to the tower since that's again it's not warded. Although I'm not really sure why Storm is going back to the base. It's like he, Storm went out, killed. I think it was one or maybe two creep waves worth of gold and just return, that's that's horribly inefficient. And this is completely unnecessary as well, it's just wasting time. It, it, uh, on the minimap you could have clearly seen the enemies grouping up in the bottom side. I only zip to clear waves if the enemy is imminently pushing down the tower and need this extra defense, otherwise zipping is just waste, wasting time, space and resources. With, with these past like 2 minutes, Storm took down what, 3 waves? 
and did nothing else. And, and the time could have better spent like sitting on the enemy tower, chipping, chipping at it and rotating between the jungle. So not only are you getting more farm from it, but you're also forcing the enemy to defend the tower or give it away. Which again is space for the team either way. So always be aware where you can contribute the most and, and, and zipping to clear a single wave and then going back is like a horrible waste of space and time. And, and with the vision, if, you, if, if someone would argue here that Storm doesn't have vision so it's dangerous, well, you can buy the ward yourself, you can place it on like the cliff on the rune and you would easily see the incoming rotations. As a storm, don't do not don't ever hesitate to buy your own vision if you need it. And in this case, storm really needs it. This was kind of a necessary jump. Could have died and achieved nothing. So do, uh, don't do these. If you're jumping, you should always have a clear goal. Like maybe if, if he jumped earlier, he could have scared them away or maybe saw or Ross's health, maybe attempted a steal, but after the fact, the jump will do nothing. Just a waste of time again. And let's talk about Lincoln's here. Is it really that good of a pick? I, I would say it's, it's not really a good pick since the only thing you need to care about is Kanka's X and, and Barra's Charge. And considering they have Axe, and, and Rifkin can Pudge even, those are three heroes that are really good at initiating. So in most cases, Storm would just let them initiate and and and, and have better items for team fighting. All Lincoln's does is block a spell that is really dangerous for Storm and provides small bit of regen. And in this game, there are there aren't really any spells that are imminently dangerous to Storm, which wouldn't hit other heroes first. That was a really good fight. Although I would say uh, Storm should never man fight Monkey King in the ring since his damage comes, Storm's damage comes from uh, like spells and overloaded right clicks. And, and if you're fighting Monkey in the ring, you're basically just standing around right clicking him through the increased armor, which is, again, not very efficient. Try to let other heroes fight, or find other kills. I only fight Monk in the ring if he's like really low and you can kill him in the next like 5 seconds, without wasting too much resources. What really bothers me in this game is that the enemy's uh, outer outer top tower still stands. Like no one in these 30 minutes just organized small push party. Zip. Now in this case, zipping to clear the wave and teleporting back worked because the enemy is looking to push down and go to the middle, and now they cannot. In previous case, they were not looking to do that, so that was. Not real efficient, but in this case, this was. One thing the entire Dire team is not doing really good, a Radiant team is not doing really good, is they're not... They are outside, with little vision, trying to fight trying to find fights this is bad for the entire team like if you're gonna do some walking parties scouting parties which you're gonna walk outside just make sure you're establishing a vision perimeter first in this case this didn't happen they took a fight outside without vision and this resulted in losses of two heroes okay two things here a really nice double kill but the jump, the primary jump, while it worked, it wasn't executed perfectly. And just for the record, next time, I think I said this before, if you're gonna jump and orchid someone, make sure you land next to him so you can continue uh, 
like using spells and right clicking. And if you're jumping past someone, do not use Orchid, because that's kind of a waste. Otherwise, uh, so far, the player is fighting with Storm pretty, pretty damn good, I would say. He understands when to continue hitting, he understands when to fall back. The only thing I didn't like, is, like I said, is how he uses Orchid and lands like super far away, so he either has to bail back, wasting Orchid, or return back, wasting mana. And this was the casual case of overextending, which sometimes often happens really. I make those mistakes, those, those mistakes as well. Sometimes you're just in the middle of a fight and, and, and you forget to check the status of your teammates or mana. And this can lead to deaths. If Storm was a um, bit more active, uh, pushing down the waves, the Radiant team could take maybe take down more towers naturally with creeps. And well, if instead of Orchid or a Storm went to Yules, Bloodstone or Bloodstone Yules, he could have been much more active on fights without relying on Orchid pickoffs, which probably would have turned a lot of fights. And Again, reclaimed space, so I think those are the two most crucial mistakes we have in the game so far. Itemization and lack of split pushing. And lack, is, lack of split, split pushing is, again, attributed to the lack of vision, which again Storm can fix just buying wards himself. With a proper pickoff, um, and which you need proper vision for, I'm pretty sure like Storm could kill maybe Dazzle, maybe Phoenix, and then the entire team could go as five and take down some towers, but this just isn't happening for some reason. And this was a bad play by both teams. Radiant jumped without vision, and Dyer was not around the area to join the fights. But yeah, even though they weren't, they, they have the means to get into the fights really quickly with a with a spirit breaker. And as a result, again, it was two, three, kill, two, two deaths for the Radiant team. So always have your vision ready if you're doing some pickoffs. If you don't have vision, then do not attempt solo pickoffs, just clear the creeps and get back. So there was like 5, 6 avoidable deaths in this game for Storm. And speaking of BKB, what it does is allows Storm to fight without being disabled. And like I said, in this particular match, Storm can already fight without being disabled. Like, the only things that matter here are, are Kanka's Axe and Spirit Breaker's Charges, which, which they will mostly use on, on other heroes. Since they have Wraith King, they have Pudge, they have Axe, who will always stand in the middle of fights. So BKB is kind of a waste. Bloodstone would be amazing here. The Radiant team ha has pretty good sustain with the Wraith King's reincarnation. So if Storm would build for the sustain himself, he could be in the middle of fights a lot more without worrying and naturally build up Bloodstone. On a positive side, it's really good that Storm is buying his own uh, sentry uh, dusts. Which led to, I think, 3 or 4 kills, maybe? So, yeah, if you have kill potential on someone and they have invisibility, always buy your own dusts. Uh, 
let's skip forward a bit. This is the first push in, in like the entire game where Radiant is actually trying to do something instead of just farming the jungle. So if Storm itemized properly, the Radiant team would have won more team fights and could have pushed far sooner and with more efficiency. And this time, they only attempted the only time they attempted to push versus two dead people. Even then, they managed to, well, not do anything useful. With the farm Storm's got right now, he's he's really, really, how do I say this? He utilized his net worth. No, he was correct in gaining this net worth, gaining this gold, gaining these items, but the items itself were a bad choice. And if all this like, free farm for Storm uh, and Storm got different items, this this could have turned the game. Look how easy it is for Storm to just jump in, play some Reynolds and jump out. And with a with the more region oriented uh, I items, like like I said, Orchid, Blood Bloodstone, Yules and then Orchid, he could he could have easily just zipped around the fights without ever being disabled. Taking kills left and right. That's it. I hope we all learned something today. Thank you and good luck.